Boom, boom, boom. Hey, everyone. Hey, everyone. <laughs> so weird to do that. El Shima here, obviously. El Shima here, and welcome. Welcome, everyone, to Be Cool. Be Cool. Be Cool. If you do not know who I am, then you need to Google me right now. It is another fabulous episode. Today is a very special day. It is a fabulous, fabulous Wednesday. I have my very own special guest, special guest, special guest, who is more lovely than I am, Taylor from Housewife Swag. Wednesday's always like kind of like a good day. Yay! Awesome! Man, my voice just like squeaked like crazy. Awesome! Fuck yeah! Pencils down. Let the show begin. Hey everyone, and welcome to episode 10 of Be Cool. I'm your host, El Shima, and unfortunately, I'm actually noticing a current lag. So let me make sure that this is not going to stay on this entire time. If it does, I'm just going to have to restart and do it like I did last week. And if you weren't last week, it just went perfectly fine after I did a quick restart. But it currently looks like it caught up to me. Yay, I'm excited. All right. So like I said, this is episode 10 of Be Cool. And I brought a special friend with me. And her name is Taylor. If you do not know who she is by this point, she is the owner of Housewife Swag on Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, what other social media sites you can find but she is definitely one of the raddest chicks that I've met so let me introduce you to Taylor hey Taylor how you doing hey girl? I'm good how are you I am fabulous 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 I'm mm -hmm. grateful that you were able to make it onto the show so thank you so much no thank you so much for having me I really appreciate it oh yay so I already kind of gave you the rundown on how it was going to be going. So for everyone else, I just want to go over real fast that this is going to be Taylor's show. So it can be however long she wants, and we're going to ask her questions and just get to know her as best as we can. But if at any point she feels uncomfortable about any question, Taylor, you have your own right to, to the next <laughs> if you feel like it. Okay. Um. I'm trying to think. Also, I always forget about this question, but how rated do you want this chat to be? It doesn't matter. We can do, we can ask any questions. I'm pretty open, especially sexually, so any questions are, are fine. Awesome, guys. You heard it. She is open to <laughs> Um, like pretty much everything that you want to pretty talk much about. everything um, yeah. so literally go crazy with the questions <laughs> with it and let's get the ball rolling yeah. all right so Taylor um unfortunately with this podcast or actually fortunately with this podcast I like to be different than constant interviews that at least I've been you know dealt with and I'm sure you've also had interviews from yourself as well as tumblr questions from your fans right and typically they're always the same after the same asking you know what's your favorite color and how long have you been doing this and what made you get started and obviously those are important type questions to get to know you better but i want to you know try to push those boundaries a little bit further and so i want to actually start off with the unfortunate part to get it over with but to do a quick bio about yourself and ah. you can say whatever you want to say about yourself uh, and keep it short or keep it long it is your game so go ahead when you're ready i am so bad at these i um, am 25 years old i live in florida um, I started my Tumblr in 2010 um, with the idea that it was going to be a joke. It was kind of like a bet between a friend and I. Um, we started them to kind of, we thought Tumblr was stupid, basically. So we started it with the idea like to see who could last longer on Tumblr. Yeah. And I don't know, I think it was in 2011, it just kind of transformed into what Housewife Swag is now. And it's just been growing and I, I don't know, it's been pretty crazy. Um, I don't know, a lot of the people that know me kind of just know everything. I'm pretty open about everything in my life, so I don't know. <laughs> 
Well, I mean, I know you've done countless videos and you're so endearing to your fans, answering as many questions as you possibly can write and talk about. Yeah. But for the ones that actually, you know, never met you before or right. don't even know who you are, I'm curious for one of the questions is what came about with the name Housewife Swag? So I originally actually had a YouTube channel back in like 2007 where I did makeup tutorials. That was like what I did, right? Yeah, I know. And I shut that one down. And one day on Twitter, I this is back when swag was actually a term that people still used, which it's not at all anymore, obviously. Um, it was back when the big swag ordeal was happening. Um I was like, well, I'm a housewife. Let's just put swag at the end of it. And I like mentioned it on my Twitter and everyone's like, oh, that's so funny. Yeah. And I did it. And now it's like, there are some days I wish I could change it, but obviously I can't because people know me by housewife swag now. And um, yeah, so it just kind of stuck and that's what I'm, I'm stuck with now. So. I personally like that name. I mean, obviously it's like your baby and you, you know, you've been through it since yeah. the day it was born, but I, I think it matches. It like works, even the swag part. I mean, swag will always be a term that people know and understand what the meaning is. And if they don't, they just remember where it kind of came from kind of thing. Right. So it definitely works for you and you definitely <laughs> do it and hang it with pride, especially with those stickers and those teas yeah. that you're selling. Oh my God, you just, you have it on lockdown. So oh, awesome. thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. Um, <laughs> so on top of it, you know, you mentioned that you started in 2010, right? Um, 2010, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like a joke. Um, well, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. Basically, how did you start? Did you, um, like, I'm trying to like form the question in my head. Did you right. start, you know, with it just being a personal blog to yourself and, you know, showing your selfies and then somewhat sometimes reblogging other imagery or was it just primarily just your selfies? Like, how did it actually progress? No, it now? took a long time for me to post pictures of myself, actually. Um, it was not something that I did right away. Mm -hmm. I I just used it as like Tumblr. Like, I just reblogged things and, and, you know, and then eventually I was like, oh, you know, and I started posting pictures of myself every once in a while, but it was, it was nothing risque. I started off very, very mild, very PG. Um, I think the first year I didn't show anything. Like I was still very, yeah, it was very, very like tame for me. Um, and then one day I just bit the bullet and I did it. And, you know, obviously I just went with it. Now I've watched a lot of your videos. Um, mm -hmm. you have a lot, but they're all like nicely edited and Thanks. having great topics to mention. So for all those that never met Taylor or any of her Tumblr or Twitter social sites, you definitely have to check out her videos on YouTube because they mm -hmm. talk about a lot of subjects that a lot of people can get inspired by. Got me inspired listening. To oh, them. stop and it. One of the one videos that actually stood out the most for me is I think, I don't I looked based on um, the oldest you know, mm -hmm. videos you posted, and I'm not sure if my computer skills and technology skills was able to figure that out, but one of the videos that I do believe was probably your oldest one is when you were talking about confidence. Mm -hmm. And that I is. would like to hear a little bit more about how you became you know, confident about mm -hmm. who you are, because I know a lot of girls, and even males as well, are you know, very self-confident. You know, confident about themselves and you know ones that actually are so conceited about themselves and I just want to hear your input on what it takes to have a huge confidence towards yourself in a good way and there's also you know mm -hmm. in a bad way I guess if there is such thing. Um, I think that it comes from realizing that life is the longest thing we're going to go through but it's also very short you know we don't know when it's going to end and um it's getting to the point where you can hear what other people say about you, but ignore them and remember all of your good qualities about yourself. You know, we live in a very, very harsh world and there are always people that are going to put you down regardless of what you do. You could be an angel and there's still going to be people that put you down. And so it's getting to the point where you're like, yeah, I'm not perfect, but there are a lot of really good things about me and I want to share those things with the world and not being ashamed of being proud of yourself. I think that's very important. Yeah, that's a one major key point in you know, yeah. the confidence thing. It's 
ridiculous how how much there is hate in the world. You would think by now with the wars and battles and history, we would obviously learn by our mistakes and right. our struggles to be, you know, the society or the human being that we are, but obviously it's still there. And you handle it with so much pride when you do with the hate mails. I try my <laughs> hardest, but I tried to tend to ignore, but you mm -hmm. would like have this, um, at least from my personal opinion, but when I look at your answers, you know, from those hate mails that you get on Tumblr, the ones that you at least choose to mm -hmm. showcase, right. how you handle it is so top notch. Like you're not really being what a lot of people would, you know, consider a woman being a bitch if they're standing up for themselves or being right. somewhat um, in control or stern. But yeah. you handle it with so much pride and dignity and do it in such a positive note from a negative source. And I just mm -hmm. applaud you for that because it's not oh. easy whatsoever. <laughs> It's really not. It, it definitely is something that there are days when I can't handle it and I'll just block everything and just move on, you know? But I think it's important. A lot of people are like, well, why don't you just ignore all of your hate mail? And I get that perspective. It could be annoying to see that on your, you know, it could be annoying to see that all the time. And if you're feeling down seeing something like that, it's probably not going to make you feel good. But I think it's important for people to understand that yeah, I do have all of these really nice comments. I'm so grateful for everyone that supports me and, you know, says nice things. But I get a lot of negative comments, too. So that's going to come with becoming confident and putting yourself out there. And I think it's important for people that are on the journey to becoming confident to see those things. Because they need to know people are going to push you back and they're going to try to do everything they can to knock you down. But you just can't let them do that. You know, so. Oh, you're such like... <laughs> Hearing you talk is just such like an inspiration. Um, and Stop. speaking of which, though, I mean, lo and behold, you started Tumblr as kind of a joke. But yeah. what um, basically got me addicted to you, as <laughs> the best word as I can think of, is not what your best feature is. Because later <laughs> on, we'll talk about it because it's something that you can't miss. But it's also the fact that you... Um, have such a great positive outlook on your Tumblr. Like, even doing research about you before this, um, I was always curious. I'm like, she just somehow on her Tumblr, she has this very, like, whimsical, like, positive feeling vibe that's going through her Tumblr. And I'm confused. I'm like, how is this possible? I mean, obviously, it's a social site, so, and she can post her personality and things like that. But how is it, like, any different than either what I'm trying to do or what other, you know, people that own Tumblr sites are doing mm -hmm. with their, you know, own personal thing? And once I did a lot of research about you, it's just, that's who you are. Yeah. I don't know. Um, thank you. I mean, I've never been described as, like, anything like that. I mean, I just try to keep things as positive as possible. I know there's, a, like I said, a lot of negativity in the world. So I want my blog to be a place that people can come and feel safe yeah. and be happy. You know, like I don't, I don't want all of the negative to be surrounding them at all times. So if they're able to come to my blog and be happy for a moment or something, then I've done what I wanted to do. So. And you definitely do it because I have a lot of <laughs> You know, people comment Thank saying, you. oh my god, you, you transformed my life or something. I've never got that, so it's just always, like, makes me shake just reading it. Oh. Um, so as a person like yourself, I also read that you have a family of yourself and you're mm -hmm. able to, you know, put that positivity um, that you've learned and that, you know, is who you are onto mm -hmm. your family. Um, mm -hmm. I know you've mentioned it and just to, you know, Recap for the ones again that you know have not never met you or don't even know anything about Housewife Swag, but you you keep your private life private yeah, I'm like getting to <laughs> private life somewhat private. You have showed your daughters before on your videos, but when it also comes to your husband, you like to keep that a little bit down low. Um, I guess for everyone else and for me to not talk about your life. Do you want to um, kind of explain how your family life is like, especially when it comes to, you know, social media and what you're willing to showcase? Um, I think that, you know, a couple of years ago, I would be willing to share anything about my family, but you get to a certain level of um, popularity. I don't really want to say popularity, but I mean, you know, I have a good amount of people following me on Tumblr now, you know, so you reach a point where you kind of realize, okay, 
I need to be able to protect my family and protect their feelings and protect my feelings because I'm very sensitive. Like we've talked about before, like I'm a very sensitive person, especially when it comes to my children. They are absolutely everything to me. So having random people on the internet say negative things about my children, it hurt me when it first happened. And it was surprising to me that it hurt me as much as it did because you can call me any name you want to. It's really not going to have an effect on me. I've been called everything. So that doesn't really hurt my feelings. But my children, bringing like my children into it, I was like, oh gosh, I need to stop sharing so much about them. Yeah, of course. I've kind of really reined myself in this year um, with not talking about them as much on my Tumblr. I also talk about them on Twitter and yeah. and, you know, and I'll have them in YouTube videos. That's different to me because I don't have 80,000 plus people following me on those sites. Yeah. It's a little more personal. Those are the people that I know for the most part want to see me do well. You know, I know that there are people on Tumblr that follow me just to see me mess up. So it's a little bit different in that sense. But I kind of have taken notes from celebrities that keep their their private life private, like not saying I'm a celebrity by any means, but just saying like they've inspired me to kind of learn how to keep their private life private. Like a very good example, Beyonce and Jay-Z, yeah. they're amazing at keeping their private life private, right? right? So that was kind of my thing was like, okay, I kind of need to just step back and realize that not everyone wants to see me succeed, even though I would love that, not everyone wants to see that. So when it comes to my children or anyone else in my family, I kind of just have stepped back and and realized that it's not something I feel comfortable sharing. Like, yes, people know that I'm married. It's not something that I hide whatsoever. Housewife swag. Uh, (laughs) It's also in my FAQ. You know, it's not something that I hide, but it's not something that I feel that people really need. You don't really need to know anything about that. That's not really what you're here for most of the time. Yeah, of course. And my kids, like, I love sharing things about my children, you know, because they're absolutely everything to me. They're, you know, they're completely the reason that I do everything in any way that I can to succeed. So, but, you know, I understand that people don't want me to succeed. And so they're going to say negative things about my children. And I don't know if I'm at a place right now where I can't be nasty and say something back to them because, you know, they're so little and I don't know. I just don't think it's worth it. So. and it's just the they're fact so that, innocent. The fact that people, I mean, again, we're back to the hatred part, but mm-hmm. people, it's just, it's kids. They don't know any better. They know only what the society or their parents teach them. And of course, you know, Taylor being very positive in force, it's just the fact that they're going to grow up to be similar to you. I mean, obviously, there's society that's going to also teach them like school and stuff like that. But right. majority of the things that they're going to learn is from you. And right. they don't need, you know, other people hating on them because they're just these innocent, you know, little you know kids that are just wanting to have fun and be playful. I don't understand why people do that, but whatever that's on their issue and that's just something they want to live with their life um (laughs) but i'm curious i am the opposite when it comes to you i mean i do have a family but my family consists of a mother and siblings and Mm -hmm. aunts and uncles the closest family that i can relate to you and obviously this is not even anywhere close but i have a boyfriend and a one year one year old weimaran a dog (laughs) that's amazing no that's pretty close i mean children and animals they are um not calling children animals but they are you know it it, it gets you prepped definitely for children so yeah yeah she's psycho (laughs) just insane like my boyfriend and our roommate have to take her on a walk right now because if she was here at the house with me recording it would be chaos oh god ridiculous but i'm curious on what your opinion is like with being a mother and since you know i've never experienced that and i don't know if i ever will but i'm you know it's one of those things especially with being a female a lot of women you know always you know not always but tend to want to have a species of their own that they've you know birthed and raised Mm -hmm. themselves and i'm curious on your opinion and also your lifestyle as being a mother um, up until the age of 17, you can ask anyone who knew me back then. I always said, I'm not going to get married. I'm not going to have children. I'm not going to do any of that. I just want to be by myself, be successful. That was it. That was like what I wanted to do. Um, but then I kind of like, you know, obviously I got married and then I started 
you know, we started talking about it. I got pregnant very quickly after we got married and I was also very young. So, you know, and then when I had Chloe, it was this thing that just clicked in me. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is, I made this, this is amazing. You know, and it was just, being a mom is just the coolest thing in the world. And it's definitely like the biggest accomplishment of my life. Like I love being a mom. I love having my children. Um, I'm not, it's, it's very strange because I understand like there are days when I was like, I, I think like, what would my life be like without children? Right. Yeah, of course. But, but then if they're gone for 30 minutes and I'm not with them, I'm freaking out. I'm like, I miss them. Where are they come? Are they going to come home soon? Like, you know, I can't imagine not being a mom now. So I don't know. It's funny because I changed literally in like a couple of years from like, no, I'm just going to be successful and do my own thing, you know? And now it's like, I can't imagine not having children. I, I just can't. And I understand women that are like, eh, it's not really my thing. Cool. You know, I have friends that are like, I will never have kids. And I'm like, that's okay. Yeah. I totally get that too, you know, but personally, yeah, I can't imagine at all. <laughs> It's so sweet to hear that, though. I mean, one day maybe I'll have that. I mean, I feel the same, though, with my dog. But then there's t times where I'm like, I'm glad to be away from her because she's just so damn psycho. I need you do that with kids, too? Yeah. You do. There'll be days where I'm like, I have to go away. Like, call a babysitter, and I'm like, hi, can you come watch them for one hour so I can just breathe? <laughs> you know? Like, especially during a bad week, you're like, okay. And you feel guilty for doing that, but it's important. You know, it's really important to take that space and be like, because you're still a person. Yeah. Even though I'm a mom, I'm still me, you know? So, and that being a mom isn't what defines me for being myself, no, but it's very important to me. So, yeah, I don't know. We You do that too with children. Yeah. Don't worry. I have enough, two nephews, two nephew boys, and oh gosh, they're three and one year and like, I don't know how many months, but oh my God. <laughs> I mean, they live in Tampa, so I see them, like, I'll probably see them tomorrow. And in my head, I'm like, I love seeing them, and they're awesome birth control for me because well, I'll yeah. miss them so much, especially when my oldest nephew, you know, cries when I leave. I'm like, oh, my God, I just want to just take them home with me. But then when I'm there, and they want to play so, like, so much every second of your life, and I'm like, I just want to – I just want to have a moment to myself right now and not be like in the bathroom having a moment. Like I want to just be in the living room and just watch TV or just have like my normal time. And man, I'm like, that's why every time I go to the house, I'm like, thank you, brother and sister-in-law for having these children. So I do not end up with one when I am not. <laughs> right. And I'm like, I don't remember the last time I was able to use the bathroom by myself or <laughs> take a shower by myself. Like they're constantly in there with me. So I get that, you know, at night when they're like asleep, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to go take a shower and breathe in the shower and not have to be like, don't open the door. Don't open the shower. You know, it's Oh, that's so cute. Um, I want to take a moment also just to uh, read out the chat so far. Um, there's a few people that actually have said something. Um, so, uh, hold on. I don't know if you saw, but a user on Twitter tweeted us and said that he was going to watch the movie Her and then follow with our, you know, uh, podcast. Mm -hmm. And so he said, Her was incredible. Can't wait for this, um, though. That was earlier, right before we started. Mm -hmm. um, but he also followed off with, she definitely helped me a ton with my own issues and she inspires me every day to be positive. That's mm -hmm. always something that's always great to hear. <laughs> um, another person says, her smile is the best feature, right? Oh, stop. <laughs> um, and the one earlier about her, he says, I agree. It's my favorite thing about Taylor. I follow you on Tumblr because you're awesome. LOL. Oh. That's such amazing fans. I, mean, I My followers are literally incredible. Like, I cannot even thank them enough ever. And I feel like I'm saying the same thing always. I'm always like so much you guys are incredible but I mean it every single time I say it and I feel like I don't say it enough yeah. like I could say it every single day and I I'm just so grateful for all the support that I I continue to receive like oh I could not ask for better people ever oh it's always great to hear that um <laughs> another thing that I'm you know wanted to talk about is the question personally I'm a full-time model and I'm curious if do you consider yourself a model or just? Um, I consider myself a cam model now. Yeah. Um, and that's my full-time job now. 
Um, I only cam twice a week, but you know, still there's a lot of prepping and F, you know, stuff I have to put into the shows during the week that I'm doing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of like, that's what I told my mom. She, Cause I was trying to explain it to my mom, you know, and like my mom is so open. She, I could tell her anything that I'm doing and she'd be supportive of it, which is really cool. But so I was like, this is what I do. And she's like, Oh, so you, you know, and I kind of had to explain it to her cause you know, she can barely speak her. So, so I don't know. But um, yeah, so I call myself a cam model. And I think that, I mean, that is my full-time job now. I'm, you know, it's replaced the income that I would have lost if I was still working, so. And you mentioned, obviously, your mother. So your family, even, you know, including your husband, are supportive with you and understand exactly what you're doing? Yeah, everyone's been super supportive. It's not something that I hide. I'm not ashamed of what I do. Yeah. You know, like, I understand that it can be seen as negative. And, you know, there's a part of my family that is very religious. And I know that they would say something. But at the end of the day, it's it's not their business, you know, it's not anything that's affecting them. So I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. My mom knows she's completely supportive. You know, my sister knows she's really supportive. Everyone's just really supportive of it and they understand. So that's always I'm like, great to hear when yeah. family members are supporting, you know, you and your choices that you're making. Cause you need that support, not only from your fans, but the most important is from your family and friends, the ones that you know personally. And I've been fortunate as well that my family supports what I do. I mean, obviously with the nude work, you know, when my mom first found my nude photos, she's just like, she smiled. She's like, oh, I saw your photos. And I'm like, uh, she's like, they're cute, but we may have to talk a little bit after this. And I'm like, oh, my God. And but they're, you know, they're totally fine with it. Obviously, they probably wish I did something, you know, else. But as long as it's making me happy, that's all they, you know, they, they're concerned. And especially with my mom. She's a mom, obviously, and so it right. matters if, you know, as long as I'm, one, happy, but also safe. So yep, absolutely. every time she it's... wants me to check her up with her and let her know what's going on, and, you know, if I tell her about a gig that I have, she's just like, do you know this person? And I'll be like, no, I've never met them before. Well, you know, send me their address and let me know when you get there <laughs> and leave, and I'm like, okay, mom, I got you. Yeah, my mom is definitely like that, too. She, you know, it's important, and, and definitely in, you know, what we do, it's important to be extremely safe. And, you know, kind of make sure you're connecting the dots with everything and putting things together. But, yeah, I'm, I don't know. I mean, it's good that your mom supports you. Everything that you've done is extremely classy and it's very well done and it's super artistic. So, yeah, there's it's really beautiful. So Aww, I understand. You're making me blush. I'm happy to <laughs> in the chat. Um, <laughs> sorry. have a moment to myself. Um. Now, you did mention your full-time job as being a cam girl. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously, like, recap real fast, you started Tumblr as a joke. How did that basically happen? Yeah, it evolved in... It was very interesting. So um, I started it as a joke about a year later-ish, I think, is when I finally actually posted my first topless photo. Mm -hmm. And... You know, I I made them I made them wait like a year. It was like, oh, here's a tease, but you don't get to see it, you know, kind of deal. And so when it finally happened, people were like, oh my gosh, and it was it was a big to do at the time. And then I just started doing it regularly. And it's not something that I was getting paid for, obviously, because yeah. it's Tumblr, so I don't get paid for it. But then I was contacted, and I was able to do like an actual shoot. Um, and that kind of brought in more people and more followers. And then, um. I cammed every once in a while, like just, you know, randomly. And it wasn't like a big deal. There were maybe like 30 people in my room, which now is not a big deal. You know, I have like hundreds of people. So, you know, it wasn't a big deal. And then I started my YouTube also. And then one day, it was in May of this year that I started like regularly camming, yeah. like mid-May. Um I was like, why am I not doing this? This is so fun. I love being able to talk to people that support me. I love being able to, um, you know, kind of just catch up with them because I'm always talking on my blog, but I don't always get to see what they have to say. And so I was like, it's important for me to like, you know, do this. So 
I did one in mid-May and it was amazing. It was like so much fun. I had a blast and I didn't think I would have that much fun. But I knew I'd have fun, but I was like, oh my gosh, I love this. I want to do this again. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm going to start doing it Mondays and Fridays. And I've been doing it, you know, since May. And it's something that I really, really love doing. And I, you know, I'm really grateful that I've had the support that I've had with it because it's something that I love doing and I'm also making money. So that's a bonus. You know, you can't beat that. You can't beat like loving your job you it's amazing so that's always good to hear oh i love when oh, i love when people have fun with what they do it's yeah like, it's so uplifting when you hear things that they just love what they're doing and they're not you know it's not like the normal nine to five job where there's like it's fucking monday you're like right. oh yeah it's fucking monday <laughs> it's monday <laughs> no yeah like i i've worked that boring nine to five job like i was you know i worked my way through the company and i did the accounting for the company and i like it wasn't that I hated it, but it was like I hated working from someone else. Yeah. I hated having to report to them. I hated that I was only making X amount of money mm-hmm. and I deserved way more than that, you know. And then I was gonna go back to work after I had my second child and they were like, Okay, well we want you to get this promotion. I'm like, All right, that's awesome, you know, great. And then I told them the salary that I wanted to make and they offered me like eight thousand dollars less than that and like a year. And I was like there's no way you're basically offering me what I make now, but I'm going to be working 50 hours a week Ooh. instead of 40 that I was working because yeah. I was going to go salary. There's no way you can ever convince me to spend 50 hours away from my kids for that amount of money. Like it just wasn't worth it for me. So I was like, look, I'm not going to go back to work. And then whenever I was able to like start camming full time, the first month that I started camming, I pulled in like three times the amount that month than I would have working my other job. And so I was like, okay, so this is, this is definitely worth it for me, you know? And obviously some months are better than others. And I'm not there just for the money. I like being able to talk to them. And I, I, you know, they're, I feel guilty when they spend too much money. I'm like, stop spending money. And I really mean it. Like, I don't want them to spend any more money on me, but you know, obviously I can't make them do anything, but um, (laughs) they don't listen, (laughs) but it's, it's a blast and I'm not having to work for someone else. I'm not having to get dressed and drive to work. I can literally get ready 30 minutes before the show and I can have on pajamas and no one's going to say anything to me, you know? So it's amazing. And the same with my videos. Whenever I became partnered, I'm not partnered with YouTube. I'm partnered with um, maker studio. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that brings in, not a lot of money, but that brings in some money. So that helps you, you know, and making videos is something that I do love to do. It just takes a lot of time and a lot of like, you know, you have to get the lights right. You have to get the topic, you have to edit it and then process it. And, you know, it's just a lot of work, but, um, yeah, I love doing it. So it's totally worth all that hassle. It that is. Into. And obviously everyone does enjoy it. Thank you. Um, for you know, either it be males or even females, of course, that are influenced by you or just inspired or fascinated with the idea of becoming a cam girl or guy. I'm sure there's cam guys. Um, <laughs> can you kind of give your own opinion on the, not really, well, I guess step by step, but how it was like from, you know, deciding, all right, I'm going to start it and then your process to get to where you are now? Yeah, um, I think that the first thing, obviously, is to, there are so many different sites, so just kind of look around and decide which site kind of fits you the best. I decided on the site that I'm on just because it's one of the most popular ones, and I didn't really know any better. I wouldn't necessarily go with them again if I started out, but either way, I mean, they're good. You know, I they're not, like, sketchy or anything, so I think that's important, you know, to make sure that there's nothing weird going on but um so I just signed up and um I think one of the most important things is to before you even broadcast is to just like just set your boundaries there has to be things that you know if if you're one of the models that is willing to do everything then that's good if you're willing to like I refuse to show certain things I, I just won't do it you know I'm like strictly pretty much topless 
Um, but if I like do a shower show, I always have my bathing suit bottoms on. And that's just something that my followers have grown to understand and they support it now. They, they don't even question it anymore. And so it's important to set your boundaries because there are going to be people that are going to be begging you for things constantly. And you have to be able to be like, no, I'm not going to do that and move on. Um, I think that setting a schedule is really important because then that lets people know when you're going to be on. If you're kind of sporadic with it, I think it's a little bit harder for people to realize when you're going to be on and when they can catch you. So, you know, they, they'll they miss you um, more often if you don't have a schedule. Like I'm on Monday, Fridays, people know that, you know, they just do it. So <laughs> I think that's important. I don't know. Um And then just have fun with it. Oh, and keep a big glass of water by you because you will get thirsty in like 30 minutes. Yeah, you will get so thirsty. It will be crazy. It's like I always have a big thing of water by me. And it's something that when I first started, um, like when I was like, okay, I'm going to do this for real. I researched the heck out of it. I do that. I just research everything. I'm like crazy with it. And so when I did that, one of the tips that another model said was like, always have something to drink next to you because you're going to get thirsty talking so much. And it's so true. You get so thirsty and just, it wears you out. Even though you're just maybe sitting there sometimes just talking, yeah. you're like, by the end of it, I'm like crashed. I'm done. I'm like, well, all right, <laughs> you know, but just have fun with it. And, you know, there are so many resources online that can help with like ideas or anything, you know, and I'm putting together like a master post on it, mm-hmm. but I don't want it to be halfway done. You know, I want it to be like really thorough and like really helpful because when I first started, there was only a very select few girls that would actually help me. Most girls were like very like, uh, I'm not going to share my secrets. And I understand that yeah. from a business standpoint, that completely makes sense. You know, you don't want another girl to be able to take your ideas and what if she succeeds more or something, you know, I understand that from a business standpoint completely. So I get why girls aren't very um, open about that, but there were a couple of girls that really helped me. And I think that, um, you know, kind of a way to pay that forward. I'm, I'm going to try and do the best that I can to help anyone that wants to get into it. Um, Obviously I don't know everything, but I'm going to try and share what I do know um, because I do want people to be successful and to be happy with what they're doing. So I don't know. I think, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that, that's as much as you don't technically call yourself a model, other than you know a cam girl. Mm-hmm. You, it's the similar standpoint between the two. I mean, obviously, with modeling, you can go as far as doing erotic and doing certain things like that. But even from the smallest, where it's just you know fully clothed and fashion, there's girls that when you first start out, you don't know shit. You got to learn all by yourself, especially yep. when it comes to the business side. You have to learn everything. And that's what I did. And obviously, that's what you did. Mm-hmm. And that's what a lot of people, especially just, you know, not saying in a rude way, but that's, you know, how normal people see us. It's just, oh, you just get naked in front of a camera or sure. you do explicit stuff for money or whatever, whatever. They don't actually see what happens behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And on top of it, when we have to research what, you know, we need to do or figure out out what you know is something that will help improve the career path that we've chosen we get you know introduced to other girls or males that are in the same industry as us and we need assistance from a kind of like a mentor to show yeah. us the way just to kind of guide us to the right direction or into any direction whatsoever just as long as we can learn from something mm-hmm. and from what I've experienced is there are some great models that are willing to help and willing to answer your questions and whatever you want to know about the industry that you know you're you know choosing to go to and there's also the ones that don't and i mean like you said it's a business i totally yeah. understand when somebody doesn't want to share the photographers that they worked with or what location best you know worked for them or whatever makeup product they use on their skin. Like, I completely understand. I mean, it also is a competitive, you know, uh, career that we both are in. But it's more fulfilling to me to, you know, not only get answers from fellow models that are willing to help, but also for me to share as much knowledge as I possibly can from my personal experiences and my personal opinions. I mean, that's why I also do this podcast for the ones that do not know me. Obviously, I'm Elsie Me. Hi. Um, <laughs> but it's 
to showcase not only what's going on in my life, but also to help other people, either it be models, photographers, artists, or just, you know, normal people that just are fascinated with this lifestyle. It gives them a viewing of how it's like, and it's not all, you know, bag of sugar. There's some fucking spikes in there too that you're just gonna like wish you didn't, you know, get. And on top of it, with me having, you know, special guests such as yourself or the ones from my pre previous episodes, it allows, you know, them to not just get tired of my voice talking and talking. Oh, no, they wouldn't. <laughs> but um, it allows them to hear from another person's standpoint and what they've experienced. Because obviously what I've talked about is obviously, again, my own, own experiences and what I've learned from the things that I've, you know, went through. And so having somebody else from a different platform and them, you know, experiencing it and understanding it and just basically better opening their minds and knowledge about the art scene is something that I'm, you know, wanting to inspire for everyone else. And so it's always good to hear that you're doing the same thing for others and you're willing to do it. I mean, I definitely know, I don't know everything. I mean, right. you got to keep positive and say, hey, I know fucking everything in the fucking world. <laughs> right. But realistically, yeah, it's obviously you're not going to know everything, but it's good that you're able to share what you do know and help others. Because, yeah, they may stay a still a couple dollars from you, but fuck it, whatever. You help somebody achieve where they're getting to. And so that's the best feeling. Yeah, it really is. It's worth it. I mean, I know that there are going to be people like, yeah, if they take a couple of dollars, if they take a couple people, good for them. Yeah. You know, hey. That's all right, because it's not like, I don't know, not everyone has the same taste, right? So not, especially like in modeling, even not everyone likes to look at the same thing. So I may share something with you and you may be successful in your own entirely different yeah. group of people and good for you. Like if you're able to do that, that's awesome. And then maybe you can pass that on to someone else because, you know, there's not very much information out there and the information that's out there is you know, people just don't want to share it. So the people that are willing to share it, I think, are really special people. And um, I've been really grateful. Like, just silly things like on the business side that I, I had no idea what to do. Like taxes is a big one. Like, you know, right. Just stuff like that. It's like no one wants to help you. So being able to reach out to someone that is already knowledgeable about it and saying like, hey, can you maybe help me out with this? And then being like, yeah, absolutely. Let me tell you how to do this. Um, it's really helpful. It's something that I definitely want to be able to do for other people. Yeah. And it, it kind of relates to um, how you basically just said what you said. It relates to basically volunteer work. And I've known you mentioned in the past that you actually have done volunteer work. And there was, again, I'm sorry, but I did stalk you just because I wanted to be prepared That's okay. for this, obviously. And give you some, <laughs> you know, crazy, like, questions that just was out of the box kind of thing. But there was one video that you did where it was um, Tumblr questions. I do believe that you did a video of it. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions was, like, what is... Um, one of the biggest, I'm trying to rephrase it, but one of the biggest um, positive things that you have done in your life. And you shared a very um, intimate story about you being a vice president yeah. and going to a toy store. And I mean, I'm not sure if you want to share it to others that haven't had the chance to watch that video or anything like that. But when you said those <laughs> words, it made me like, oh my God, this girl is like heart of gold pretty much. <laughs> Um, I just, you know, I grew up with a single mom, so we didn't have a lot. My sister, when she was born, was very, very sick. And, you know, my mom being a single mom, we were put into a Ronald McDonald house, like, the, you know, the yeah, houses yeah. that McDonald's has. Okay. We were put into one of those. My mom was able to survive, you know, we would have been homeless. Like it was crazy. And so when growing up, my mom was always really good at keeping me grounded and keeping me grateful for like, you know, what I have and um, understanding that compassion is really important with everyone. And so um, growing up, I kind of always tried to do whatever I could volunteer wise, you know, and like I've always done um, where I feed like on Christmas or Thanksgiving, I'll go to homeless shelters and I'll volunteer there, um, knowing that those people don't have anyone to spend time with. Yeah. And so, you know, it's important to go there and, and to kind of 
pay it back a little bit because I know what it's like to have nothing. Um, and so with the toys, um, I was able to go to a toy store overnight and get a whole bunch of toys for children who um, wouldn't have gotten toys otherwise. And um, we wrapped them that night and we were able to give them to them that morning and seeing their faces with just getting like a pair of socks was incredible. It was like the most humbling thing you've ever been through because, you know, here I am like, that year I might've gotten a lot of stuff, you know? Yeah. Um, but I remember, I know what it's like to not get anything. And I know what it's like to, for your parent to feel like, so like they've disappointed you so much. And I know that, you know, Christmas isn't a big deal to everyone, yeah. obviously, but for my family, it was always kind of a big deal. And there was a year when my mom just couldn't do anything for us, you know, and she just felt so guilty. And I was at the age where I think I kind of understood. Yeah. And I was like, mom, you know, whatever. So um, that's definitely really important for me. Um, last year for Christmas, I gave away like a gift card to one of my followers who couldn't afford their Christmas dinner, you know, and I'm going to do that again this year, but I'm going to do it for Thanksgiving and for Christmas since I have the money this year to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's important. And, um, you know, I also volunteered at, I don't know if you've ever heard about it, but it's called look good, feel better. I think it, so. It's for women who um, have um, fought or are currently fighting um, cancer. Oh, yeah. And um, since I was a makeup artist for Benefit, I was able to go and like teach them how to, you know, because obviously they, they don't have hair anymore. They don't have yeah. eyebrows anymore. So I was able to teach them like how to draw on their eyebrows so that it looks natural or how to do certain things with their makeup, you know. And it's it's really a very you know, like they influence me so much. And so I go there and I'm like, okay, this is how you do this. And then these women are talking to each other, like about their treatments and about, you know, and it's just like, yeah. they're so inspiring. Like, you know what I mean? Um, and by the end of it, they're like laughing and they're happy. And I'm like, wow, you know what I mean? It's like amazing. So anytime I can volunteer, um, I try to do it. I know that I don't do it nearly as much as I should. And I'm, that's something that I constantly fight myself with. Yeah. I'm constantly fighting myself about that. Um, but I'm also one of the kind of people that wants to be able to do everything for everyone. And I like to, you know what I mean? And I don't ever ask for help. That's a problem that I have. And so um, I'm working on it. I've like, I've made myself a schedule. I'm trying to stick with it. That way I can kind of give a little bit of myself to people, but then still kind of have a little bit to myself too, because it's important that I don't overstretch myself anymore. Yeah. Something that I was doing and it was showing and it was, you know, it was affecting me. Yeah. Uh, so. Well, it's always yeah. good that you're being so supportive for other people and not just yourself. I mean, we live in a world now that's just, it's hard you know, to look at other people. You walk down the street and you see a homeless person and, you know, it, it's it's hard. I mean, it's, it's not that it's hard, but a lot of people aren't as open-minded to look past a person's, you know, face or, you know, what they're wearing. They, you know, it's more beneficial to look past all of those negative things that you just see as overcoming somebody and actually look inside the goodness of the people and also, you know, seeing, okay, well, this person suffers from this issue. How is something or what is something that I can do to transform it, make it better? If I can't right. fully um, heal it, what is something that I can that will at least bring them joy? And it will also bring me joy to right. see them so happy. And that's something that you're personally fulfilling for yourself. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's so, again, <laughs> you're such like a heart of gold. You're so inspiring. You have this big positive, like, halo around you oh, no just falling like just perfect pure <laughs> tears of joy and happiness like it's just, just no. so like golden right there yeah. but if for those that have not seen that video uh, I do not remember the title I just I know it was a tumblr question I right? think it's probably just tumblr Q&A or something yeah. I don't know yeah you have to watch that one because when that topic came up Taylor, you did get emotional, but you did say you was because you were sick or something was going yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> it was that moment where you were like, oh, my God, this girl, like, oh, it just, 
makes your heart just race in a good way. And you're just like, oh, she is just so perfect. <laughs> no, not. Thank you. <laughs> um, I wanted to take also another break real fast and okay. go over the chats because they okay. have been going crazy. Now I have to find where I left off. Man. Oh, goodness. It, it started slow. I will not lie to you. It started slow. Like I had to tell people like, hey. Feel free to ask questions or something. I need I need help. I have, you know, a list of things that I can talk about, but like I need other questions that I will never right. think of in my entire life, especially with your fans, because they know you on a different level than you know what I do or what you know my fans know of you. Mm-hmm. And so and on top of it, if my fans want to ask questions, fucking go crazy. I could care less. Um right. all right, sorry, I'm going crazy. All right. Anthony says hi. So Anthony is the one that watched her, and he's an avid uh, chatter here. So that's he seems yeah. Like he's awesome. definitely one of the biggest supporters that I have for yeah. sure. Anthony, you're awesome. I don't <laughs> yeah. I don't know yeah. you, but you sound so fucking rad. Um, he is. Another one said I saw Taylor online live the other night, and she had '90s hip hop playing. She has a fan in me now. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Oh, I love 90s hip-hop. I too. Oh, my God. I love any so, 90s pretty much. Oh, right? Such a good time. Um, mm-hmm. All right. As one of her followers, as one of her followers, she keeps trying to tell us we're the awesome ones, but we know she is the reason we're so good. Oh. Not true. <laughs> it's not true. Um, Taylor is dope, and Shima was great to interview. This is awesome on all le- levels. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm like jacking up everybody's like right No. Now. <laughs> um, we love supporting you, Taylor. Never going to change and you can't make us stop. No. Argentum. Argentum. Am I saying that right? <laughs> Argentum. Um winky face. There's a winky face. <laughs> uh, okay, hold on. And then this is from you saying that um you tell your fans or your audience that, you know, you don't want them to pay money and stuff like that from the chats. This one was, yes, I've heard her say that. We don't listen. Another one, <laughs> we certainly don't. Nope. Can't stop. Won't stop. <laughs> but that's okay with me. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Never, it's... ever listen. We might as well be deaf. <laughs> <laughs> that's so true. Your fans are so comical. It's so fun. They are amazing, I'm telling you. I am so, so lucky. You are. Oh, my God. Um, well, we listen, but we don't obey. That's Fair true. <laughs> God, that's so fun. Um, I like to hear her voice. I just don't listen. There's two. Um, it's Anthony and then one that's called K Tesh. Oh, kind of having yeah. like a little mini conversation. So, so. They're my two biggest. They're some of my biggest supporters. Absolutely. So, so. <laughs> um, she takes care of us. We take care of her. It is only fair. <laughs> I plan my whole week work uh, around Mondays and Fridays. Oh. I've con- contemplated leaving my Tuesday slash or Tuesday to Saturday schedule so that I can have a day off after the show or after mm-hmm. a show. Um. Okay, they're still having a conversation, so I'm just going to break it up. They're going to have one, so just... <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'll just read exactly what they're saying so you just know what the 411 is. Probably a good idea, Katesh. You stay on so late most shows. I mean, I'd likely still be awake that late because I'm dumb like that, but at least I could know. Enjoy the show and then get to sleep a long time instead of f- just five to six hours. Indeed. Um, aka Taylor does math. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad at math. I'm so bad at math. (laughs) Don't worry, I am too. I mean, I enjoy doing math because it makes me feel smart, but realistically, I still count with my fingers. So I'm like, and people are like, How are you an accountant? I'm like, That's really not math. You're kind of just being organized with numbers, it's a little bit different. Um, but I'm so bad at it. I'm like. so bad (laughs) (laughs) it's when you're into financing that's when it involves some yeah um all right so many so many comments um taylor does do math taylor does math taylor is best at math anyone who says taylor is self-centered or doesn't care doesn't actually know taylor true story um she is pretty perfect that's not true (laughs) um she'll never admit it but she is one of the finest people i've had the pleasure of getting to know 
You are a wonderful yeah. You are a wonderful person with a beautiful soul. Oh goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could like look comments like this. Obviously, I'm not so awesome. You are. My... You're so awesome. You are. I promise. <laughs> I, need, I need to work on it a little bit. To be just <laughs> <No>. like Taylor. <laughs> oh, um. So you, I guess you mentioned that you're an account accountant. I was. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I did notice though. You did post um, that you just got ordained. Um, how? Yeah. How was that? Like, I mean, obviously, I know exactly what you do once you're ordained. But like, mm -hmm. what made you decide to do that? As well as what was the process like to become one? I always said that once Florida, um, you know. I would say like past the same sex marriage, but once they decided that it was unconstitutional, that I would get ordained. I always said, whenever Florida does it, I'm going to get ordained. And everyone's like, okay, Taylor, whatever. Um, I just didn't feel right about doing it until everyone had the opportunity to get married. So whenever that happened, I was like, all right, I'm getting ordained. Um, if you Google it, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Oh, really? Um, oh, yeah. It's like super duper easy. It's not difficult whatsoever. Um, you basically just fill out a form. And then you like read about what you have to do and then say that you'll do it. And then that's pretty much it. Um, and then, you know, there are different counties that have different laws yeah. and are different. So you kind of have to figure out where you're at and kind of what counties are around you and what you can do. It's super simple. It's so easy. Um, and I haven't done one yet, but I really, really want to do it. I, the first time that I get to do it, I'm going to freak out. I'm going to be so excited. I'm going to be more excited than them probably because... <laughs> Like, how amazing is it that I get to, like, bring these two people, like, you know, and be like, all right, you guys are actually married because I said so. You know, like, that's so cool. Awesome. I don't know. I'm really looking forward to it. And whenever I actually get to do it, I will definitely be updating everything because I will be so excited. Like, oh, my gosh, I can't wait. Oh, my God, that seems so exciting. Uh, but like, so, <laughs> I mean, I've never been married. So do you have to read a certain pa passage from the Bible or is it just whatever the fuck you want to say? As long it's as whatever it you want to say. Really? Yeah, absolutely. You don't say anything from the Bible at all. Um, you can do whatever you want. You can, you can write your own vows. You can say anything. It's nothing. Nothing's really said um, in terms of like what you have to say to each other, whatever you want to do. That is awesome. Maybe one day I, ordained just for the fuck of it just to say I did it say oh anyone can I can marry any or I can get anyone married do it I'm not right I need like, to, and once this is done I'm gonna google it and see how we do it, it and then just accidentally do it I'm like oh well <laughs> just it's it. so <laughs> simple <laughs> it's not difficult <laughs> so like most people um Obviously, the biggest, other than your smile, of course, but one of the biggest attributes to yourself, physically wise, is your lovely 42H size <laughs> girls that sit on your chest. And I'm fascinated on how you see your career with being very, um, and, you know, um, well, not unfortunate, but fortunate to have such, you know, unique qualities, <laughs> qual qualities right? you, and how that works for your career. Basically, saying, with my career, I am known for my breasts. I mean, my breasts aren't that huge in comparison to a lot of girls, but they're bigger than, you know, most also when it comes to, like, fashion and certain things like that. And so I typically try to be... Mm -hmm. as um, informed with my viewers as much as possible, asking them, you know, how do they see myself and what stands out to them? What do they enjoy the most out of me and what I do? And I do know, I mean, constantly, especially on Tumblr, that's the, you know, the main spot that people will be like, fucking titties! And, like, right? you know, just the most outrageous fucking things. Right. Uh, it brings joy just reading those. But Like 17 and they've never seen them in real life, so <laughs> they just have to talk about them? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's so uh, ridiculous. <laughs> like we haven't heard it 10,000 times before. But right. I personally 
I understand it. And, I'm, you know, I'm fortunate and I love my body the way it is. I would never trade it in the world. I'm never going to get fucking surgery unless I have to. Like, I'm dying right. and I have to. Um, but I am more, you know, curious on changing my or at least I'm changing my fans' perspective on what they see me. I don't want to just be a pair of boobs and that's right. it. I want right. to, you know, fulfill myself as trying as hard as I can to push the boundaries in my career and do right. things that people will say, oh, you're 5'3", and, you know, this weight with big, huge boobs, you're not going to do fashion. You might as well stick to glamour. Um, and I, you know, I understand that reasoning. Glamour, yeah, it's easy. Or well, not, it's not that it's easy, but when you have right. a very curvaceous body – it is easier to do sexier things and like showcase what your mama gave you kind of thing. Right. And, My mom's not um, giving me these, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and just that sense. And so I'm fascinated on your standpoint with your main attribute, other than your smile, of course, and your gorgeous looks, but the other attribute when people first come onto your Tumblr and that's what they kind of see, how do you feel that works for what you do as well as you know with people commenting on them and making it kind of like a standpoint are you okay with that or is it one of those things you wish it was a little different and people saw other things about yourself um i can definitely say that 98 percent of the time the thing that people say to me is i came for your boobs but i stayed for who you are and i stayed for your personality so hearing that i think is very reassuring that i'm doing I'm kind of walking that fine line of like, hey, I'm here for you. I want you to be strong. You know, I love you, you know, talking to them as much as I can. And then also like, I'm a very sexual person. So, you know, me also being able to do my shows and stuff like that, you know, it may be something that they enjoy, but I enjoy doing it as well because I'm very sexual. I'm very open. I'm, you know, I'm proud. I'm not ashamed of myself. Um, and so I think that, I'm kind of in that sweet spot right now. And I, I like where I'm at. I like that, you know, there are always going to be some people that just see me like, oh, she's just a pair of tits. That's fine. Yeah. There's always going to be those people, whatever. Um, but in the same respect, the people that really take the time to go through my blog or go through my videos or anything, they are the ones that come to me and they're like, hey, you know, I might have came for your boobs. I might have came for what you looked like, whatever. But I stayed because you know, you really do care or I stayed because, you know, whatever. And that's, that's what I want it to be like, you know, and if you come because of, you know, my boobs or what I look like or something, then okay. And some people stay just for my boobs and they don't care about what I have to say. They don't care about anything. That's all right. It's going to be like that when you're doing what I'm doing. Yeah. But um, as long as the majority of the people are like, Hey, you know, I like you for you also. I think I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing. And I'm, and I'm in that spot that I think is, um, it's okay for me to be where I'm at right now. Yeah, of course. With that, so. Yeah. Oh, that's always great to hear about that. I mean, hell, you got it, plant it, you <laughs> yeah. work, do your thing. It ain't nothing but a check and wing. Right. <laughs> trying to be silly if you haven't noticed, obviously. No, you <laughs> Um. Again, I'm like looking at my list. People. Ask questions for me. I need them. Ask me questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that you mentioned, actually, can't remember where I saw it, but I saw it somewhere. It might have been the videos because I, I tried watching, or I did watch all your videos, actually, but there's, oh, gosh. there's a Bless good amount. So, like, there's a here. lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was here for like an hour, and I'm like, oh, my God, she's adorable. I just can't have <laughs> enough of it. Um you mentioned, or a question that was asked is the fact that uh, did you or have you ever played musical instruments? Mm -hmm. And for those that do not know anything about Taylor, do you care to share any of your interests or past experiences with any musical instruments? Um, yeah, so I can play the piano. I used to play the clarinet. Um, I started to learn how to play the guitar, but I never went through with it. And I used to sing. That was my big thing that I did when I was younger. I was in talent shows and I sang at baseball games and stuff. That was kind of my thing. Um, but as I grew up, I think I just hit a lot of negativity from people that were really close to me about my singing. Yeah. And it wasn't something that they were doing because of my lack of talent. I think it was just something they were doing to be hateful. Yeah. And so with that coming in, 
I kind of lost my confidence in singing and I kind of just stopped doing it. Um, and I kind of wish it was something that I followed through with because I'm not saying I was like the best vocalist in the world. Like I'm not anywhere close to that, but it's something that if I would have worked a little bit harder on and if I would have spent a little bit more time doing, I think I could have been, you know, more successful in it than I was. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you hit that negativity and everything happens for a reason. So, yeah, you know, who knows what I could have been doing at this point, but, um, yeah, I can really only play the clarinet. I really want to learn how to play the violin, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it because it's, oh, I don't know. So, What made you get into you know playing the clarinet or in playing piano? Like, Did your mom push it? Did you just No. Uh, my mom has that? never pushed anything like that on me. Um, well, my singing, she pushed on me a little <laughs> bit, but... You know, um, I think, you know, my piano is just something that I grew up with, you know, um, people playing the piano around me. So one day I was like, hey, I want to learn how to do this. And um, so someone close to me taught me how to play. And I just kind of started learning. Then I learned how to read music. And then it just kind of went from there. I haven't played in a while, um, but I probably could still do it. I might be a little bit rusty, but I'll get the hang of it again. Um, I played the clarinet in school like our school band, I think it was my middle school, I played it. And then I was also in um, like one of the vocal groups. Um, I did both of those things. Um, but yeah, I kind of did it and I don't think I was really good. I don't remember, but it wasn't something that I really enjoyed. Like the piano, I really enjoy when I sit down and I'm like, okay, I'm in my zone. I really enjoy doing that. But clarinet was just kind of like, oh, let's try something different, you know? Yeah. So. Do you, do you own a piano inside your house right now? I don't. It's something that, you know, I just bought my house last year. So it's something that I would like to add. Yeah. But um, when you first buy a house, you realize all of the things you don't have. <laughs> and you're like, oh, that costs money. And so does that. So it's going to be a while. But, you know, eventually I'll probably add a piano. I would really love to have one. So, yeah. And is piano playing? I know a friend of mine a long time ago played the piano, but... Is that something like related to obviously the biggest thing is, you know, when you learn how to ride a bike, you don't ride it for a very long time, but once you get back on it, it's just simple as pie. So is doing the piano the same similar thing? Yeah, I would definitely say so. I mean, as long as, I mean, I'm going to be a little bit rusty when I first play again, I think, but um, I think, yeah, I think it's pretty much just like riding a bike. I think I'll be able to get back into it pretty easily. Yeah. Well, you definitely need to play and learn the violin. I remember when I, I was uh, in middle school. And that is when you, you know, I remember being in fifth grade and we got to take a tour of the middle school. And so the band played and so did the orchestra and all the other, you know, musical section. And I remember sitting there watching the orchestra play and I'm like, the right? violin, holy shit, that thing is it's amazing. Glorious. It's so amazing. It's like one of the coolest instruments. I would love to be able to play it. I think it'd be amazing. And okay, compared to the other um, string instruments, you have it right there so you can get so into yeah. it, like just with the whole song and what you're playing. With the other ones, you kind of like, you know, the cello and stuff. Yeah, you're, you're kind of, yeah. There. But with the violin, it just seems so active and so emotional and just the sounds of it. And I remember I told my mother, oh, once, you know, after seeing the orchestra play, I'm like, I want to play the violin. I want to sign up for orchestra class. And she's just like, all right, um, before I buy you an expensive violin, right. come back at me in a week and let me know if you still want to play it. And so <laughs> right. and I was a kid, so I'm like, oh, violin, what? I don't want to play that. That's something that I did growing up, too. My mom was always, my mom always entertained my ideas. Yeah. And so I danced for a long time. And then I played soccer for a long time. But those are really the only things I stuck with. Mm -hmm. I played softball for, like, a year. I played rugby, like, co-ed rugby. Oh, really? Yeah. For it was oh my gosh, I did that for a year, and then I was like, I'm never doing it again, <laughs> ever. Right? I'm five foot one, so imagine these like six foot three guys coming at me. It was so how did so you get awful. into rugby? That just seems like just a, like <laughs> it was really interesting, but it was something that I was like, hey, I want to do this, and my mom was like, all right, she signed me up for it. My mom was always like, sure, do whatever you want to do, you know, which is great, but. Oh my gosh. You know, if your kid wants to, she wants to play rugby and she's five foot one, you may want to like, you sure want to do this, Taylor, you know, but she's like, all right, she signed me up. And you know, when she signs me up and she pays all that money, she's like, you're going. <laughs> so no turning back. 
<laughs> right? I'm sorry, but you're going. And I was like, oh my gosh. And I was like, oh, they'll take it easy on me. You know, I'm a girl. I'm really small. No, nope, not at all. So that only lasted a year. But I mean, I danced for like six years and I played soccer for like, no, I danced for eight years. I played soccer for six. Um, so that's really what I did, you know, and I stuck with those, but like I played softball and I was like, uh, uh-uh, nope, too much pressure. And they were like, you know, way too much pressure. Um, and now I'm good under pressure, but back then, no way, you know? And so, you know, I'm kind of that way with my kids, but you know, well, obviously my tiny one, she she doesn't know, yeah. but like my four-year-old's like, I want to dance. And I'm like, all right. So I signed her up for it and she loves it. So great, you know. But if she's like, hey, I want to do this. I'm like, are you sure you want to do it? Like, let's go look and see how these people are doing things. So, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. With uh, dance, was there any type of um, dance genre that you most admired? Or did you only stick to one type? No, I did um, tap, jazz, and ballet. But tap was definitely my favorite. Really? I still remember my routines from tap. Really? Yeah. Yeah. It is. I loved tap. I tried to talk my four-year-old into doing tap as well as ballet because there's like a dual class. Yeah. She's like, no, no. I just want to do ballet. I'm like, oh, you would really like tap. <laughs> but she doesn't want to do it. Fine. You don't have to do it. But I just, I love tap. There's something about it that's just, you know, and people can say the same thing about ballet or jazz or whatever, you know, it's just something that connects with you. Um, man tap was that for me for sure and, and you definitely are able to make sounds and music basically with your feet and the talent yeah. of it I took dance class when I was in middle school as well as high school and mm-hmm. especially high school we had to learn like jazz modern hip hop tap ballet well I don't think we actually covered ballet we might have just learned the feeding positions and stuff right but like we learned majority of the types of j- dances there are and I honestly, I hated tap just because I couldn't get my feet to do that shit. I'm yeah. Like, oh, fuck. <laughs> it, my mom, I think I drove her crazy. Like practicing, you know, on like wood floors. She was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> Taylor, stop. And I'm like, okay, you know, but I was one of those, like I'm one of the people that I will do, if I do something, I'm going to do it to the best of my ability and I'm going to work as hard as I can to succeed at it. Yeah. And so that was how I was with tap, you know, and I would just constantly be tapping and she was like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? <laughs> well, your mom sounds like a great, you know, person to at least help you to... You know, yeah, she's always your, pretty good with that, for pave, sure. Pave your life. Um, so I noticed, uh, I'm not sure if it is healed properly yet but you did post that you broke your wrist oh my gosh how did that happen I wish I had some like really cool story but (laughs) I (laughs) fell in the shower I have glass doors on my shower Uh and um I I slipped on the tile in my shower I had just cleaned it so maybe that's why I'm like trying to decide I don't know what I did um or maybe I like got soap on it I don't know but I slipped and when I slipped my natural reaction was just to put my hands down. Yeah, I didn't think about it, right? I just put my hands down and um, like this part of my hand hit the railing where the glass slides into, right? And I knew I messed it up. And I hurt my back too, but my back was a lot less than my hand. And so when I I like just sat there for a second, because when I get hurt, I just, I don't want to be talked to. I don't want anyone to talk to me. Don't speak to me. Let me like breathe through it because I'm just, that's just how I am when I get hurt. So I'm like sitting there looking at my hand and it's turning purple. And I'm like, oh, okay. And it's already starting to swell, like literally seconds after it happened. It's already purple. I'm like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, I broke my hand. And that was like the week that I was like, all right, I'm going to paint my kitchen because I haven't painted since I moved in. I've been putting it off, like trying to decide colors. I finally picked a color for my kitchen. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to paint this week. No. (laughs) And then I break my hand. Um, And so, um, gosh, so I... I was like, well, it's 10 o'clock at night. It was like 10 or 11. And I could go to the ER because we thankfully have a hospital that was just built right, right around the corner from where I live. You could literally walk there. Um, so I was like, yeah, I could go to the hospital, but it's going to cost like $3,000 at an ER, right? And I'm not going to do it. I'm so hard-headed when it comes to money now. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to wait it out into the morning and I'm going to go to like a care spot or like one of the places that you can go to, like, you know. Yeah the care clinics or whatever. And so I took four Tylenol. I never take medicine. Okay. Took four Tylenol because it was so swollen. 
and I couldn't move my hand, like my fingers at all. My fingers were just like, I couldn't move them. I was trying and I couldn't. And I, um, took a really, really, really warm bath, like as warm as I could stand it. Yeah. Just pretty hot. And it felt so good in the water. And then when I got out, it was like hurting so bad. So then I put ice on it. I'm like trying to get the swelling down. It didn't work. So then I slept with a um, heating pad wrapped around my hand. Right. So then I woke up in the morning and I forgot, you know, obviously um, when I finally passed out, I like woke up in the morning and I moved my hand and I was like, oh my gosh. And it was still super swollen and awful and bruised and I was like great so I had made an appointment I went at nine o'clock and um like all right let's do x-rays obviously so I did and um she's like well you broke um this bone right here Mm -hmm. and then you broke bones in your hand like these little bones I just crushed them basically and I was like great so they put um a like a temporary splint cast on my on my arm um and then I had to make an appointment with an ortho doctor for later that week. So I went to that doctor. They cut it off, like the little temporary one. I got x-rays. And she's like, this bone has been broken for a really long time. It's something that you broke and it healed, but it healed wrong. Right? So I called my mom. And I'm like, mom, because I knew I had broke my arm when I was two. But she said it was this arm for my whole life. And so I'm like, mom, you said I broke my left arm. They're saying that I broke my right arm. She's like, oh, it might have been your right. I'm like, hello. (laughs) Don't you think that's something we should know? So apparently what had happened is when I was younger, I was two when I broke my arm. And I had broke it and no one knew that I broke it because I didn't cry or scream or anything. So it healed, right? It healed itself back because they didn't take me for like a week after. And so... I basically just have a little bit more room between these two bones than I should, but it's fine. So that didn't really break. So I was like, oh, awesome. But then I still had the problem where I couldn't move my thumb at all. And it, I couldn't feel it. That was the thing that was scaring me is like, I couldn't feel my fingertip on my thumb at all. Like I could not feel it. So they did another one and they're like, yeah, you did crush the bones in here, but um, just wear this brace. You can take it off for an hour a day. You can take it off to shower because we don't want to put like a cast on that for just these bones. You'll be okay. Just, you know, they gave me a brace where I couldn't move my thumb. I'm just really hard-headed and I, I can't wear a big bulky brace and have a baby and I can't do that. So I'm like, eh. When I started not hurting as bad, I just took it off and I'm like, I'm all right. So then when I went back to get it checked out, she's like, oh, everything's healed and it looks good. I'm like, oh, thank God. Because I wasn't wearing it very often. I suck. But basically it ended up being not as big of a deal as they, because originally she's like, you're going to have to wear a cast for 12 weeks. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I cannot handle it. Like I couldn't handle the smell of it after three days. So I know. 12 weeks, I would have died. I would have cut my arm off. I don't know. It would have been terrible. But she was like, the ortho doctor was like, yeah, um, that's been broken for, that was just healed wrong. So you're just going to have to deal with it for the rest of your life, having a little bit of space right there. And I'm like, well, it's obviously not bothered me until then. Oh, it might have been your right arm. I don't know. I'm like, mom, gosh. (laughs) So thankfully it's healed. Hallelujah. It doesn't hurt at all anymore. Thank goodness. Oh, God. That is like, <laughs> obviously you saw my face. My face the entire time the story was happening. I'm like, holy shit. It's so bad. I'm the opposite of you. When I, I was helping my boyfriend a couple years back for a New Year's party, we had to do like these cardboard cutouts. So I'm like, this is the first time I've ever really cut a cardboard before. So I have a box cutter and I'm like, you know, tracing the image and he's like, no, you have to literally get deep inside there because you're yeah. only penetrating like the like the thin layer on the top. I'm like, fuck, this hurts already. <laughs> so I'm like trying my hardest. I'm an idiot, but I knew I because I had I'm left handed. So I think no, I was doing with my right hand, though, but I had my left hand down and just holding it up. And I am coming with the right and just kind of just doing this motion constantly over and over again until I get down and then I move it down again. I don't know why I thought it would be smart to keep my hand down below what I was doing. And the box cutter just came and sliced my thumb. And I mean, to the point where I, when I know when something like that happens, I am like in total shock. And I'm like, so I'm holding my thumb like this the entire time. I'm like, I already know I fucked up. (laughs) <laughs> I already know I fucked up. And I'm like, by my, oh, I'm, I'm by myself in this little area, but Francis, my boyfriend's up on a ladder doing his own thing right there. And I'm like, Francis. And I'm like, Francis. And he's like looking. He's like, what? What's wrong? And I'm like, 
I fucked up. <laughs> and that was the first time, and it was pretty, I mean, I didn't cut, like, I didn't have a finger missing or anything, but right. I had this pretty deep gash, and that was the first time where I actually felt like I was about to faint because of so much blood was releasing out of my skin yeah. or my body, but it was, I literally, I cry if I hurt myself. I remember um, when, I, my mother's a nurse, and now she's, like, a manager of a unit and stuff like that, but she and I went to her one of her friends parties and so there was kids there my age and younger and so I was playing with them on the playscape and inside the house was her and her friends and they're all fucking nurses and so I'm out there playing and I thought it'd be awesome on the playscape to go outside the playscape and be adventurous and okay. like you know put my feet in between the slacks and like just walk <laughs> no. across it and I guess I was wearing leather boots and I guess my boot got stuck in the hole. So I was trying to pry it off. And I guess I just let go because I thought fucking God would hold me up or something. God, right. And I just fell straight back onto the ground. And so I remember like bawling my fucking eyes out. And so all the parents, you know, come out racing to save me and sit me on the couch. And again, they're all nurses. They're like feeling my arm. I think it was making sure you didn't break anything. Yeah. yeah feeling my arm, making sure I didn't break anything. And so like my mom was just like, Oh, which is probably bruised. It's bruised on the inside. And they're like, yeah, it might be a little like, you know, you sprained it. It's, it's not a big deal. It's fine. And so it hurt for a few days or even maybe a week. And I remember, um, I wanted to go ice skating, and so my mom was like, oh, well, doesn't your arm hurt? I'm like, oh, no, my arm is perfectly fine, and so I went ice skating like a fucking idiot, but I ended up accidentally falling on that arm, and so it hurt like shit, so I knew, okay, I'm fucking done with this, and so weeks after that passed, and I remember my mom got groceries, and I was helping her bring them in, and she noticed that I was using my arm, but I was very protecting of it. Like it that's, was that's how they noticed mine, too. Yeah. yeah, it was, like, right next to my, you know, my body, and she was right. watching me do my, you know, do the groceries, and she's like, does your arm hurt? And I'm like, I mean, it's fine. It's just, I, you know, it's okay. And she's like, all right, well, we're going to go to the doctor. And so we go, and, yeah, lo and behold, it was fractured, and... Well, I was so fortunate that it was, like, centimeters, like, below the joint. So, if it was at the joint, I would have had to get surgery. Right. And luckily, it was literally centimeters from it that I didn't have to do that. And I'm like, oh, gosh, to this, so to this day, I still look at my mom, and I'm like, Mom, you and your friends are a whole bunch of nurses, and you just <laughs> think my arm was broken at all until, like, a month or so later. Oh, and my gosh. <laughs> yeah, they, that's how they noticed mine. I was, like, holding it funny, and my grandma's like, um, she's holding her arm funny, and they're like, "No, nah, she's fine." She's like, "No." So she took me to the doctor, and they're like, "Uh, yeah, it's already started to heal." So, and we're like, "Oh my gosh, <laughs> so, my mom, just, whatever." I mean, pa parents try, but obviously they're human, like everyone yeah, else. Yeah, definitely. Can't. Anytime my kids fall, it's like my check too. I'm like, "How does this feel? Do your bones hurt? Like, are you okay? Like, I'm like feeling everything, but they're so little. You don't know." There's so little. Uh, there's a few videos. I'm not sure. I always talk about it every podcast, but it seems like it always comes up. I don't know if you've ever enjoyed the site called Reddit. Yes. Thank you, Jesus Christ. You're the first person so far that I've ever met that actually, like, knows what Reddit is. Oh, Whatever? Are you kidding me? I'm serious. I just I want to blow my brain every time and post it to what the fuck, because seriously, nobody... <laughs> Nobody ever understands what I'm talking about. I'm like, I have to. I'm like addicted to it now. It's yeah, it's, it's very addicting. It's, seriously. So if you don't know what fucking Reddit is, people go now. Just, I'm, just go. There's so many things you can look at. Just go. So many, like so many things to the point where, like, if you're into woodworking, you there's a subreddit for you. But hello, because I go to the do it yourself. All the time to yeah. learn how to do things. I'm like, how do I do this? Oh my Pinterest God. and Reddit. Okay, let's go. Like, <laughs> it's, it's the place where you want to be. But if it's also like, they have some weird shit. So like, obviously, they just up the subreddit. What the fuck? And Francis always yeah. looks at me like, why are you looking at that shit? I and I'm love. Like, I, I can't. I you can't not look at it, though, right? I can't stop it. Like, it's, right. it's ridiculous. It's happening. We just go with it. Yeah. Even if it says not safe for work and death and gore and whatever title, I'm like, nope. I, that makes me want to click it. More. Right? It's not clicked. I got to click it. What do uh, we? <laughs> it's so bad. But I, I don't know. Anyways, but there is some weird ones. Like, um, I don't remember what the subreddit's called, but it's literally a subreddit 
for people that have a fascination with My Little Pony where they're doing like, the dirty brownies. Stuff. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so they have, you know, simple stuff where it's, like, woodworking and doing yourself, but then they have what the fucks and, like, yeah, that type of shit that you're, like... Right. Like, there's one, I think it's called Space Dicks or something, and I don't remember, I'm totally jacking up the subreddit, but it's it's just kind of what it sounds like, but it's just... And then there is one that's called Popping. Oh, my God, it's the most Ooh. grossest thing in the entire world. <laughs> I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to know. <laughs> But other than that, my main <coughs> biggest one that I go on subreddits or subreddits for is for fitness and sewing, um, do it yourself. I found this yeah. one that's called room porn. So people like take pictures of their yes. oh my god, I want my house right? like that. So I don't know where I was getting with the subreddits. Oh. <laughs> it's just good. <laughs> go look if you haven't looked. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I was getting somewhere with it, but it's already too late. I just went on a whole <laughs> different tangent with that. I could talk for decades about Reddit. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's orgasmic. Um, it's all right. So I'm like trying to think of other things because I, okay, let me just do a quick uh, break again with the chat. It's probably just going to be K Tesh and Anthony because they just love talking a lot. Yeah, pretty much it is though. Yep. That's <laughs> what I said. <laughs> okay, well, said. Now I'm like trying to remember, refine. All right. Okay. 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 <laughs> Um, all right. Okay. Okay. So, um, Arjean, Arjean Tom, that's a person's name. Apparently I okay. said it right. So, oh my God. Thank you. Cause I just so many fucking people's names. Really I funny. know that feeling. Um, and it was what, now that they're commenting, just saying you rule to El Shima. You are pretty awesome. Al. See, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they're so positive. Like I have, they're so supportive. It's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> Oh, uh, they are. Oh, it, makes, it brings a tear to my eye in a good, positive way, obviously. Yeah. Um, this is from Anthony. She's going to marry us to each other one day about your yep. or, uh, ordain. Uh, Argentinum has a hidden meaning for Taylor. Google it, apparently. Got to Google mm -hmm. something. Um, <laughs> Anthony says, and growing. Laugh a lot. I think, do you believe that's your boobs? Probably. Oh, yeah. My boobs have grown a lot. Oh, man. Over the past couple months. They're not, yeah. I really wanted to get on non-hormone or birth control because when I'm on hormones, I'm crazy. I'm just crazy, right? So my doctor's like, okay, well, we can put you on the IUD, Ooh. but it's $955 out of pocket. Ooh. And your insurance company doesn't pay you back. And I'm like, okay. Well, if you think about it, $955 over five years it's not that much money. Yeah, of course. But me coming up with a thousand dollars to just give to somebody to put something inside me, it's kind of a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, eh, I don't think so. So I'm like, well, let's just get on birth control. Give me like the lowest dose of birth control that I can have, you know, that that'll so still hard. prevent pregnancy. So they're like, okay. So they put me on that one. Nope, didn't work. So they put me on another one. Nope, didn't work. So I'm finally on the one that I'm on now. And I'm not, I don't have the same reaction. Like I'm not super mean well i'm still mean but i'm not like as mean as i normally am on birth control yeah. you know um so i'm like all right well we'll stick with this one but then i noticed my boobs started growing and they've grown so much like i tried on a like an l-size bra the other day and it didn't fit because i'm like i'm not gonna buy bras right now right because yeah. there's no point in me buying bras and my boobs are gonna keep growing i think they've kind of slowed down though so i'm like trying to find bras that are gonna fit i don't know it's impossible it's so impossible, but hopefully it'll slow down or just stop completely because, like, while they might like it, me having to buy new $60, $70 bras is not ideal. Um, so I'd really like it to stop. But I mean, that's what your wish list is there for. Is for the right? Value, you know? It's, it's a give-give situation. Right. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, birth control. You got to love it and got to hate it at the same time. Right? Yeah. I found out, though, uh, on Reddit, obviously. That's where I get all my news from. But <laughs> um, Quick is there, though, honestly. There will be things on Reddit days before it's on Tumblr or anything. It's – anyways, continue. I'm sorry. Um, no, it, it's, it's fucking <laughs> story. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. The news I saw, uh, apparently it is, I think, confirmed. I didn't read the article. I just read, like, the title of it and then mm -hmm. just move forward if I'm not interested. But, not that I'm not interested, but 
apparently in 2017 that is when they'll be releasing the men birth control so i'm not sure really yeah i'm not sure how that's really gonna work and pan out but that sounds awesome so yeah it gives us females a break from you know fucking taking pills every second. man because if i think about getting pregnant i get pregnant it's terrible if i'm not taking birth control if i think about it i'm like oh i'm pregnant like it's bad right <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like completely like I don't know it's terrible but um I just hate taking it it makes me feel awful you know and maybe next year I'll get an IUD or something but that also scares me because then you hear about it like moving or something and oh, yeah. see it's just so terrifying right like yeah, it's, now it's the men's time to right take over that. <laughs> situation because we're damn tired of it <laughs> so tired um okay back because i got tribe track like i always do you too. um k tash said it's the cute nose i noticed that way ahead of the boobs he's um, making fun of me i hate my nose so that's what he's doing oh i i am on you with the same band i hate my nose i hate my nose i mm. Pers personally with me it seems like all my fans that's their favorite of me as my face so i'm like what yeah i get that don't change your nose oh my gosh because i'm like i need a nose job don't do it taylor and i'm like it's so big they're like no it fits your face it looks good i'm like oh my gosh it does fit your face i'm like well, I mean, it does, it look does good, but... and i'm like oh i don't know that's just you know obviously from a different person's point of view yeah obviously. we don't Definitely. see what other people see of ourselves um the boobs are the icing on the taylor cake Taylor's smile does it for me all the time. You're not even getting questions. I feel like people already know you enough, but you're getting so many, like, glorious comments. They're just silly. <laughs> They're so sweet. <laughs> um, okay, I'm getting Taylor ass implants. That This is a fact. Laugh out loud. Yeah, I have no ass whatsoever. Really? And I joked about it, you know, because you can get ass injections, but they absorb a lot of the time. So I'm like, let me get implants. And it's been like a running joke now with the people who actually come to my shows yeah. that Anthony's going to get me ass implants when he gets famous. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think I, I don't know if I'd actually go through with it, you know, yeah. but it's a good thought to have like a nice butt. That'd be cool. It you know, <laughs> like. Be badass to have a nice ass. <laughs> that'd be so cool. Oh, my God. I. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I mean, I'm not trying to scare you or anyone else, but I saw oh, uh, The Vice, uh, kind of like a documentary a little bit about, uh, bre uh, not breast implants, uh, ass implants. And I saw it. I mean, yeah, like, obviously, even with breast too or any type of surgery, mm -hmm. it can go wrong if you're not careful of who you're choosing and right. all other stuff. But holy shit. Yeah, holy shit. there. I love to watch. Um, it's a show on TV. I don't really watch a lot of TV, but it's called botched i believe and it's literally just people that have had really really terrible plastic surgery and then there's this doctor who tries to fix it for them yeah oh my gosh i'm like oh. Oh gosh. <laughs> you know it's so sad can you imagine i don't know it'd be terrible but i mean like i don't know if i'd ever actually get them but that'd be really nice like i hate squats so much that i would rather i don't even know i I'd rather just get injections. <laughs> I'd rather just get, you know, I'd rather just cheat and, you know, get cut open and get a butt. I don't know. <laughs> uh, squats aren't fun. I mean, I, I tried getting into them pretty heavy. Not just squats, but, like, doing the whole fitness thing. I'm trying to be healthy with myself and not eat fast right. food as much. And just I'm right. trying to live yeah. as long as I can. Or Heck, yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah feeling good about my body. I have right. back issues and, like, my posture's horrible. So, like... I'm just trying to better myself, but I tried doing squats and like overhead press and bench press and all those, you know, it's called like the strong lift five by fives. And I was able to squat a hundred and ten pounds. That was the most I was able to do. Fucking, ew, it's just <laughs> painful. I, like when you first start off, it's like, oh, this is so fucking easy. I can do this. Yeah. Things. But then when you start adding the increments of the pounds, I'm like, oh my shit, no, I can't keep going. This is hurting <laughs> so much. And like you have to do the form properly or you'll fuck up your entire body. There's just so much. That, There's you know, so much. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's like, is it worth it really? I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, so. it's definitely worth it. <laughs> um, Okay, I'm like again lost again. Um, okay, we talked about. It's just gonna be them having conversation. I know, but it's fun conversation. <laughs> them. And you know, it's a good time to read them too. I want Taylor cake. 
We can definitely do that. Um, this this person is being sweet towards me. El Shima, your eyes are killing. Oh, thanks. It's See? Sweet. Um, I just lost my... Okay. Taylor cake would be tasty. Cute glasses. He he. I know too much about Taylor. I think that's when I asked about for them to ask questions. A lot of people know <laughs> a lot about me. Um, Taylor <laughs> is also an accomplished rapper. Oh my gosh. They're making fun of me. I <laughs> it's another running joke. Um, one of the things they've been asking for in my live shows is for me to rap for them. Well, the other day when my 90s hip hop was on, I slipped and I actually did like a ver Yeah. What song? I don't even remember. What song was it? They'll remember because I don't. I don't know. It was just something. I don't know. You just slipped. You just like. Blah, blah, I just like blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I didn't even realize I was doing it. But. <laughs> oh, man. You got to rap, though. We're going to end it with you rapping. We're going to fulfill no their was, needs. I'm really not a good rapper. I think they're just making fun of me. <laughs> I think nowadays not a lot of people are good rappers. Just, That's true. Are just yeah. talking. Sh I call it ignorant rap. Um, when they're just That's definitely true talking nonsense. I mean, there are obviously like Jay Z, and I mean, obviously some people might disagree, but I personally think Kanye is perfection when it comes. I to think that. he's a great rapper. Um, but he's a great artist. There's the ones that are just like you shouldn't be fucking moving. Like, right. what are you saying? Why is this relevant? You know, because I come from, and you also do too. Um, come from a generation of rappers who actually rapped about things yeah. like not just girls and cars and money you yeah. know and well they might have rapped about that too but like my favorite rapper is Nas like hands wow. down absolutely favorite rapper of all time right um so I grew up listening to Nas and Jay-Z and Tupac and stuff people that actually rapped about things instead yeah. of rapping about girls and some of the songs I'm like they get paid money for this. Like, this is a thing. People are paying them to, to say these things on tracks. But, you know, I guess each its own. And if they're entertaining someone, then good for them, right? Uh, it's, it's entertaining for me because you, you and Francis boyfriend again will share common interests when it comes to rappers he's from detroit michigan like eight mile gross back like right. the detroit oh um God. and so he's big on hip-hop and rap and like that entire culture and i mean he's this half breed he's mexican and irish so i mean he's you know he's not like from that eight mile i mean he's from eight mile but you're you when you see him you wouldn't say oh you're from detroit unless he's wearing right. a detroit cap right and so which he's always fucking wearing but um <laughs> He, you know, admires Nas and also Eminem, of course, because you know, Eminem is from, right. you know, that area. And so, you know, Jay-Z the same, Kanye the same, like, and then to the point where he gets even more in-depth with rappers, um, like Binary Star, and I'm yeah. trying to, like, remember the rappers, because I listen to music, I'm just not, I mean, I'm into it, but I'm not, like, so, like, into it where I'm researching it every day compared to him, so, like, he right. knows like, there's this um, guy, oh, damn, what is his pledging name? Uh, Action Bronson. This, okay. Um, he's not newish, but he is not, you know, he's one of the newer ones to come out. Um, he's actually not a, he's a white, you know, rapper, and he's actually not that bad, and he's actually has a chef background, too. So, like, oh, wow. all the stuff he raps about, is it can be about chicks and money and stuff like that, but then he'll throw in the chef qualities that he knows. Right. And so, like, that's completely different than other rappers because he has this knowledge of this one thing that's completely, you know, not the same as everyone else and makes it right. work with his rap. So it's, it's always fun when... There's good fucking genuine. Yeah, and it's like you can also, I mean, obviously you can rap about like girls and money and stuff, and it can be good, but you know, there's just a lot of like people that I don't know that rap about things that okay, or they're just not as talented, I guess. I don't know, that's not really fair to say, <laughs> but um, I mean, good for them if they're making money and they're successful and happy, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's all that matters, really. Yeah, <laughs> you know, as long as they're not hurting me, that's yeah. right, yeah, or okay. hurting anyone around me, that's. I, it matters, you know. That's right. I, I find okay. Sorry, I'm excited. I'm sorry for Anthony and Ktesh and all of y'all that are just having this awesome, glorious conversation. But I do finally have one question from somebody. So happy because okay. like oh, it's like a rare gem with you. Um, I know. Okay, <clears throat> gotta make sure I'm ready for it. Okay. Taylor, will you make a frozen lip singing video with Chloe? Sure, I can do that. Definitely. She's going to be Elsa for Halloween. Oh, really? um, I took her to, yeah, I took her to the Halloween store and asked her what she wanted to be, right? Because I'm, I'm pretty open about letting Chloe make her own decisions. That was something that I wanted to be able to 
really instill in her, yeah. uh, you know, because I don't want her to be super indecisive. So like she dresses herself every morning. I let her pick out whatever she wants to wear. Like, yeah. you know, whatever. I don't say anything good for her. Um, so we go to the Halloween store. I'm like, what do you want to be? And at first she said like Rapunzel. And then she said Merida from Brave. She always wants to be like a Disney princess. <laughs> Fine. She's, she's very girly. And then she's like, no, I want to be Elsa. And Elsa is literally sold out everywhere around here. Really? Everywhere. We go to like, the first place we went to was I try and support like local businesses as yeah. much as I possibly can. And so it's just a costume shop that's open year round. Um, and it's local. It's nowhere else, you know, whatever. So we, I was the first place I went into and I'm like, do you have any Elsa? She's like, I have one left. And I'm like, it's not going to be in her size. Right. Cause she's little, she's very petite. And she's like, but it's kind of small. And I'm like, and then she shows it to me and it's Chloe's size. And I'm like, ah, it was meant to be. No second thought. Get it now. I'm like, I am buying this right now. I don't care how much it is. And it was like completely reasonably priced yeah. for, you know what I mean? Like it, it would have been the same anywhere else, you know? So that's good. And so she's like, I'm going to be Elsa and you're going to braid my hair. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Aww. So, and me seeing that every day in the car, every day in the car on the way to her school. Oh my gosh. So, yeah, I would totally do something like that. That'd be super fun. She's adorable. She has these cute little curls and everything. Oh, Oh, yeah. They're cute until you have to, like, brush them every day. I'm sure. But from my perspective, Oh, I know. I literally cannot leave the house. Like, I cannot be somewhere and have no one comment on them. They always stop me or stop her. And she knows now to be like, thank you very much. And then, you know, and then they're like, oh, my gosh, she's so cute. And I'm like, I'm so lucky to have such a sweet little girl. Like, I'm just really lucky of yourself and <laughs> but I mean I, I guess people always comment on curls because those are hard to come by nowadays yeah like, they really are my hair is like wavy yeah. but it's not like super curly but you know hers are like ringlet they're like really curly and then um Aubrey's hair is starting to get like super curly at the ends I'm like oh her hair is gonna be just like Chloe's great here we go <laughs> so touching, cute. yeah um I, oh, okay. Anthony finally asked a question. Oh, um, they're, they're talking. I mean, they're, oh, I think they said uh, the song that you accidentally rapped was uh, Notorious B.I.G. So there we go. That would make sense. That one. Um, but, this, <laughs> he, but, Anthony did, but Anthony does ask, I sort of know about this, but can you talk about shooting clips for Clips for Sale and that experience? Okay, uh, so this Clips for Sale idea has been in my brain for a while, and I wanted to do it, but I had this issue where I put a lot of pressure on myself and want to put out the best quality products that I can to everyone. So in doing that, Clips for Sale was something that I researched, and you know, I, I like reached out to other um, cam girls and sex workers that do it. And I'm like, Hey, can you guys kind of like help me out? And literally only like two people responded and actually wanted to help me. But the two people that did respond helped me a lot because I thought I could just open it and like upload a video and it would be fine. Um, you have to have 10 clips before you actually start getting paid. Really? Yeah. So coming up with 10 different video ideas may not seem like a big idea, like big deal, but when you actually sit down, like I sat down and I wrote out every single thing that I could possibly think of off the top of my head that I can make a video about. It came to like 25. So that's pretty good. Yeah. But shooting 10 of those, getting the lighting right, getting the outfit right, doing my makeup, doing my hair, you know, it takes, it takes a process, right? It takes a lot of time. So, um, on Sunday, I took that entire day and just shot clips. That was like all I did that day. I like got the, got a babysitter. Yeah. That's all I did. Um, it was really tiring, but. I was able to knock out most of clips. I have like three left, I think, that I have to do this week. Um, but it, it's a lot of fun. I didn't expect it to be so much fun. Um, it is a lot of work, but then you think about it like from a business standpoint, it's going to be passive income for me. Yeah, It's not something that I have to be on and live and ready and You know, I don't have to do that. It's just something that I put into a store. And if people want to buy it, it's right there for you. You can buy it. So it makes sense from a business standpoint. But um, so I have three clips left to do. And I really, I have like tiers on my cam site where 
you know, if you're, if you tip a certain amount of tokens, you're this and this and this. And so all of the people that are part of those tiers have been waiting for like months, two months, I think, to get videos. Yeah. And so they're, they're going to get all their videos first. And then I think I'm going to try and open up the actual store like October 1st for everyone else. But then everyone that's already, you know, been tipping, they're going to get theirs like this month. That way I can, there's a little bit more incentive for doing, you know, for being so kind and for being so patient yeah. and waiting for me. But um, it's definitely different, you know. YouTube videos are, I get to sit here and talk about what I'm thinking. That is like, I have to like turn it on and like, okay, here we go. I have to make a video doing this sexual thing or something. So yeah. it's a lot different, but it's a lot of fun. Man, it sounds like a lot is involved too at the same time. So <laughs> it's I a you. lot. Major kudos and points for that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to wrap it up, obviously, because it's getting mm -hmm. close to the, all right, we're kind of dying here. Um, but uh, I have one last question from one of your fans, as well as uh, Raichu79. I'm not sure if he uses that username somewhere else, but they mentioned, like I said to you on Twitter, if you feel comfortable enough in that type of situation, then go for it. It's about your happiness and no one else's, end quote. So I just wanted to throw that in. But the last question is, what will Aubrey be for Halloween, Taylor? She is going to be a bumblebee this year. She has like a tutu and it's going to be so fun. I had a hard time deciding. I really at first wanted them to be like, Elsa and Anna or the Little Mermaid and Flounder. I wanted them to like be something that could go together, but it's so difficult finding her size costume in a lot of things. Like there was no Anna costumes that were 18 months or 24 months, you know, it's not happening. So I could special order it, but I'm not gonna pay a hundred dollars for a costume she's gonna wear one time. No, I'm not gonna do that. So um, she's gonna be a bee. It has nothing to do with Frozen, but it's gonna be really cute and I'm really excited. Um. So adorable. I mean, I know you see them every day, but you, of course, you think your child, children are so cute, but they are. They're just they're thank so you. Cute. Um, so is there any last things that you wanted to share for your fans and anyone else that is watching? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, don't be shy. No, I'm just kidding. Um, well, it was definitely a pleasure, Taylor. I would greatly appreciate it, like I mentioned 5,000 times to you. And <laughs> for everyone that tuned in, you know, we're both thankful for y'all just sticking it out to this long. Um, and, you know, all of Taylor's fans, y'all are super badass. Y'all rock yeah. it every time, it seems like. And you make her life so much better because y'all are so sweet. Um, for the ones that do not know anything about Taylor but slowly did after watching this, um, she posts videos twice a week. So you have to check that out. She's someone you have to literally keep an eye on. She does so much stuff and it's so you know liberating and so just encouraging and inspirational so you have to just have her on your like dash at all times <laughs> just stalk her if you want uh, okay don't really don't take my word on that i mean not um, like but like online that's fine yeah 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 <laughs> and online that's completely fine in real life don't go there just yeah, don't please. don't do it um and on top of it for those that are interested in supporting her as well as giving her you know awesome gifts and things like that she definitely has has a well-developed store as well as a wish list so yep. <laughs> I'm sure I mean I'm sure the ones that do know of you but if you do not know Taylor you can find the links on her tumblr her twitter and all of her other social media sites and if not I'll definitely link it after the video but Taylor again I really appreciate you taking the time no, to do this long in-depth conversation so, thank you so much thank you so much and i will talk to you soon so bye All right. lovely night you too thank you bye basically for those who have never met me before i really hope you enjoyed as well as for the ones that have never met taylor before i again hope you enjoyed that was episode 10 and it was definitely a whirlwind of questions and i'm so glad all of y'all were so supportive of her as well as just being part of this podcast and being so conversational and having a good time because she deserves it. She seems like she is just so fantastic at what she does and as well as helping you, your, you know, her fans 
become someone better or help y'all, you know, achieve something that you're going through, or even just being somebody that is motivational for you to just stare at and have a good time. So uh, again, I'm glad that you stopped on by and I hope you enjoyed. So with last things that I do, everyone remember, be nice, be cool, be honest and be yourself. Just do the right things and make sure that you're happy throughout your entire life. So again, thanks everyone and have a fabulous, fabulous night. Bye. Boom. Boom.